In this module, we would be looking at a salam structure which is quite popular in Islamic banking and finance. This is known as salam, parallel salam structure. As the name suggests, it involves a salam contract and another salam contract. So it has two salam contracts which are used in such a way that there is a risk management benefit for at least one of the parties involved. So banks offering salam based financing would like to limit their exposure to the commodity price. For example, if National Bank of Pakistan is buying a commodity on a salam basis from farmers, for example, wheat, then the bank pays the price now, which could be deemed as financing, and the farmers would be delivering the commodity, say, after three months. Now, after three months, the price of that commodity may change significantly, and in some cases, to the disadvantage of the bank. So the bank would like to limit its exposure to the commodity prices. This can be done by way of entering into a parallel salam contract with a third party, such that in the second salam contract, the bank is salam seller, and the third party is the salam buyer. So in the first salam, the bank was salam buyer and the farmers were salam sellers. In the second structure, the bank is actually salam seller and the third party is salam buyer. Let us explain this further with the help of some diagrams. This diagram was used in the previous module. This is a simple salam contract between salam seller and salam buyer. Salam seller in this case is customer, farmers, or anyone else who is selling the commodity, and the bank is salam buyer who is actually the financier. The price is paid by the Salem buyer upfront by, in this case, say, National Bank of Pakistan to the farmers, which would be deemed as a financing facility. And the commodity is going to be delivered by the farmers at a later date, say, T1. Now, in order to limit its exposure to the commodity price, the bank may enter into another salam contract with a third party. Pursuant to this salam sale contract number two, the bank would be selling the salam commodity to the salam buyer too, and the salam a uh, buyer would be paying the price at that time to the salam buyer, the bank. And the bank would be delivering the commodity on a future date. How would this happen? Basically, on a future date, when the farmers deliver the commodity to the bank, bank would then deliver it on to the third party. In this whole process, the price is paid by this third party and by the bank. So the money is going in this direction. Why would this make sense for the bank? If the bank is paying, receiving a price and then paying it to the salam seller, what is salam seller one? What is the benefit for the bank in it? Of course, the bank would be benefiting if there is a price differential between the two salam prices. 
if the selling price paid to the farmers is less than the selling price paid by the uh, third party to the bank, then of course this would make sense for the bank because the bank would be making a profit equal to PS prime minus PS. Now the question arises in this case, bank is doing nothing. In a way, it is uh, uh, buying a commodity on a selling basis and then selling it on to a third party without necessarily having to do anything substantial. Is it Sharia compliant? Of course, this is Sharia compliant. This is called trade. In all trades, some people, they buy, the traders, they buy for a lower price and they sell for a higher price. This is exactly what the bank is doing in this case. Hence, this is Sharia compliant. Now, because this involves two Salam contracts, it is important that the bank is not selling the receivable from Salam sale one. You know, Salam sale one, pursuant to it, farmers would be delivering the commodity on a future date to the bank. Bank cannot specifically sell that commodity i.e. the receivable. Why? Because in Sharia, in Islamic law, receivables are deemed as debt and debt cannot be bought and sold either on a discount or for a premium. This is a very, very important consideration which must be taken into account when structuring a deal based on salam and parallel salam. In actual practice, the second salam may take place at any time between the execution of the first salam and the delivery of the salam commodity. So this is important. It's not necessarily the case that the bank enters into salam one with farmers and at the same time enters into a salam two with another third party. It can take some time before finding the right third party for the execution of Salam 2. Also, the delivery date in case of the second Salam could be after the delivery date of the first Salam. So basically, the time of the second Salam could be any time between T0 and T1. And the delivery of the second salam could be after T1 as well. In this case, PS is the price of the price in salam 1, and PS prime is the price in salam 2. The difference between the two is bank's profit, and this is what the bank is looking for anyway.